Hello and welcome to my presentation about chaotic random series predictions with ResroarComputing.jl. In this brief talk, I will give an introduction to the field of Resroar Computing, and more specifically, I will talk about one model called Echos Networks, and afterwards I will show how one can use ResroarComputing.jl to actually predict chaotic systems. Starting from the origins, we can see that the field of Resroar Computing was born from the independently proposed models of Echos Networks in the field of machine learning and liquid-state machines in the field of computational neuroscience. The underlying idea of both these models is based on the expansion of the input data onto a higher dimensional reservoir, and the training is only done for the output layer of the system. Here we can see a general uh, structure of a reservoir computer, and in this input layer that can be called the input reservoir cap uh, coupler uh, has only the role of mapping the data onto the reservoir, and once this is done, we can obtain a state vector and collecting all the state selector, we can, of course, train them to obtain the, re the reservoir to output coupler. This shows a general idea of what the reservoir computer should be, but more specifically, we can see here the construction of the ECOS network and the nomenclature they were going to use for the next slide of the presentation. As we saw before, we have different layers, but more specifically, the input layer and the reservoir layer are created at the start of the training and are kept fixed all throughout the training, so there is no back backpropagation or training whatsoever going on. Only the output layer is computed at one shot at the end, and we will see, of course, how in the next slide. But generally, these are the indications on how the input layer and the reservoir are constructed. So we can see here that the input layer is generally just a dense random matrix and the reservoir is generally just a sparse random matrix. Uh, the training of an ECOS network can be divided in two steps. In the first step, all the input points are passed through the reservoir and all the states vectors are collected into a state matrix. And the equations that govern the evolution of, vect of the states are uh, is depicted here. And as we can see, the alpha is just a leaky coefficient and f is an activation function. That's usually the sigmoid out your hyperbolic tangent. In, once the first step is done and we have all the states collected into the matrix, we can pass to the next step. And of course, to every state, it corresponds a desired output, a desired target. And so we can, we can use linear regression or more specifically here, ridge regression to obtain the output layer. Afterwards, we only have, of course, the step of the prediction. And as we can see here, the equations that govern the step of the predictions are really similar to the equation that we saw before. Of course, the first one is only the solution of a linear regression, and the second one is very similar to the one that we saw before, but we the only change that instead of using the input data here, we are using the prediction of the previous time step. So what's actually happening here is that we generate a prediction for the time series, and this prediction is going to be used as an input for the next time, step, time steps. So we substantially have a fully autonomous system going on. Okay, now I will showcase some of the capabilities of the Reservoir Computer.jl inside of Pluto Notebook. And more specifically, I will show how you can use and train an ECOS network with just three or four lines of code. So uh, as, a, as, a, as a chaotic time series generator, I've chosen the Lorentz system. is a very well-known chaotic system, so it will be very useful for the example. Now, to, to actually generate an, an ECOS network, we just need these lines of, lines of code over here. So we're just choosing the reservoir size. You, of course, are feeding the training data onto the ECOS network. We're choosing the degree of connection of the Erdos Revy matrix and the spectral radius of the, of the sparse matrix that we are going to obtain. Now that we have this struct here, in here I just are already collected all the state selector that we defined before in the presentation. And for the training, we just need to call ESN train, give the ECOS state network struct, and choose the beta coefficient for the region regression and we, we will obtain the output layer for our ECOS network and to obtain now the output data we just need to call ESN predict giving the ESN struct the W out layer and of course a chosen uh, prediction length and plotting the results over here we can see that in the short term the prediction behaves actually quite well 
in the longer term, the, the, the accuracy is, of course, a little bit lost. And this is to be expected, of course, since we are dealing with chaotic systems. But what's more interesting than the short-term prediction is the long-term behavior, because the ECOS networks are capable of actually maintaining the climate of the attractor. If we plot the state space of the Lorentz system, on the, on the right we can see the actual system, and on the left we can see the prediction, uh, there is a striking resemblance in the two, and the actual behavior is very well maintained. Now, of course, we've chosen uh, a ridge regression because it's the most common algorithm in the ESN literature, but we can use different kind of training. In this example, we are using, we are leveraging MBJ linear models and using a Uber a loss function already built in Reservoir Computing JL, so we can just build another another output layer and create another output using the Uber loss function as we can see here. So the ECOS networks is constructed as before. What changes is just the output layer, these two lines of code. And as we can see here, we have still a good prediction for the short term. And this is a very well predicted current system using a different, of course, training algorithm. But we, we can also change layer construction. And we can see here that I've chosen a couple of examples that are built in as well computing JL. And one is to change the input layer. And for example, this uh, I've chosen to showcase the minimum complexity input layer. And you just have to give to the constructor the reservoir size and the input size. In this case, of course, with a Lorentz system, so we will have three variables. So as you can see here, and in this specific function over here, 0 0.1 is will be the uh, will be the weight for all the input layer and the sign will be uh, chosen by Bernoulli distribution. This is a very specific input layer like over here. And for the second matrix, I chosen uh, a matrix obtained by pseudo uh, SVD. And what, what we can see here is, is that we give to the function the reservoir size. We are giving the highest value that we want the matrix to have. And for example, the sparsity. And now the construction of the matrix can go on as before and the training will be done in the same exact way. Now, of course, I wasn't able to go really in depth about the full capabilities of ResolveComputing.jl, but if you go to the documentation here, you can see that there are some different models for ECOS networks and also different reservoir computers, for example, using several automata, both in one dimension and two dimensions. We have a whole zoo of input layers, as we showcase only one in the presentation, and of course, different functions to generate reservoirs. Um, as we saw a couple in the presentation. And we have, of course, a whole uh, a page for linear models and for special ECOS networks obtained from uh, super, super uh, vector machines and from Gaussian processes. So there is a lot to explore. And I hope this talk is giving you the enthusiasm to go here and, and play around a little bit. So this was all and thank you for your attention.